Okay, welcome. This is uh, the uh, logic design lecture for Wednesday the uh, 16th. And uh, what I'm going to do today is work through the practice test. Now, if we look at um, the syllabus, which I think I have up here. No, uh, sorry. I, I, I did have it. Yeah, here it is. So if we look at the syllabus and we go down to the week, where we are, we are, we're week four, and uh, let's see, week two, week three, week four. There we are. So here we are on the 16th. And uh, we're continuing to review units one to four, uh, and uh, I'm going to do I'm going to work this test as an example to just help with that review, and then uh, and then Friday we will have the uh, we will have the midterm test, uh, the first midterm, and uh, I I haven't written it yet, so I can't tell you exactly what that's going to look like, but it's going to be a combination of uh, it's pretty much going to be. What's well, going to be an online test? Uh, it will certainly be very, very similar to the uh, uh, to the practice test. Both to the to, to the practice test you're supposed to do today, which is labeled uh, uh, EE 2513 practice test number one, February 10th, 2020. So that's the practice test I want you to do. Uh, I also worked another practice test, which was from February. To, um, which was from um, uh, February 2010. So, uh, and and uh, so that one's posted, uh, or that one's on there, and hopefully you've worked that. I went through that in the video on Monday, and I will go through then the second test, which is the one you're supposed to work today. So there was a practice practice test, and then there's the practice test. So the practice test is the one that's labeled logic design uh, practice test logic design number one test number one February twenty February tenth twenty twenty that's the one you should be working today and that's the one I'm going to go do right now and these are all on Blackboard and I'll I'll show you where on Blackboard let's look at that real quickly so that you can see that. Uh, We'll put this over here and so here's blackboard for uh, 2513 and if you go down uh, here I'll, I'll make it look like it does for you so here's how you should see it um, practice test one s2020 that's that's the one that you should be doing today and I should probably change that label, but um, I'll do that later. All right, and then uh, here's the answers to that practice test. So once you do it, you can pull them up and look at it, but I'm going to go through the test today. Um, okay, now if you have not already, uh, if you haven't already worked the test, then you really should pause this video and go work the test. Uh, but if you have worked the test, then you should look at this video, and hopefully you'll get a little more um, help looking at the video than you will just um, working the test on your own uh, or looking at the answer sheet. So do try and work the test, then look at this video and the answer sheet, and hopefully that'll all make sense. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the test, and I'm going to work through it. All right. And here we go. Here is the test. And I'm going to raise this up just a little bit so we can see that nicely. Now, I'm going to hopefully... Yeah, good. And then I'll, I'll rearrange it. Hopefully I'm going to keep everything on the screen so you can see it. Um, okay, so first of all, you're designing a system to scan and store ID numbers from RFID cards used by the hospital employees when they come to work. They hold their cards near the reader and it captures the unique number on the card. There are no more than 2,000 employees in the facility 
Answer the questions and circle the best answer. At least how many bits will the ID number have to be? Assuming the number's in binary, of course. So, so how, do we, how do we approach this problem? Well, so the, you're guaranteed that there's no more than 2,000 employees at the facility. So you need a solution that can, that can store at least 2,000 numbers in the system. Now, if you were really designing this for real and not doing it for a test, you'd obviously want to have a little overhead, probably at least double, maybe even triple, maybe even more than that, because the system might be around for 20 or 30 years, and, uh, or at least a good long while, and they might increase the staff by a significant amount. So, But forgetting that, we're going to design this one for 2,000 employees. And so, um, so basically, we just take the log base 2 of 2,000. Now, uh, it's hard to do log base 2 algorithms. Can't do them in your head uh, very well. Um, so, uh, office. So, um, so uh, yeah, so... So, so the so the best thing to do then uh, is to uh, uh, is just to go ahead and assume that the two thousand is the number we're shooting for. Now, I was I was going to show you the log base two. I do have a little log base two calculator on my phone, and here it is. And you can select log base two, and then you can put in um, the log base two of two, one two three, and then um, equals so it's 10.96 which means you need 11 bits so that's the answer right there now if you didn't know that an easy way to do this is to uh is to uh think about the uh the power the the powers at two and i've gone through this before but i'll do this again just briefly because i think it is really useful uh useful exercise to do and and here's what i would have you see okay so Remember, you should know, you should already know, uh, you know. So two to the first is two, and two to the second is four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, uh, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six, five twelve, and finally ten twenty-four. Ten twenty-four is ten bits. That's two to the tenth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 2 to the 10th is, is 1K, and that's 1,024. 2 to the 20th is 1 meg. 2 to the 30th is 1 gig. 2 to the 40th is 1 T. And 2 to the 50th is 1 P. And 2 to the 60th is 1 exabyte. Okay, so uh, I believe that's right. I believe X and PET is correct, although... Might want to check and make sure I don't have those switched. So forget those for now. But in any event, um, 10, 20, 30, and 40 are correct. And uh, so, and that's probably as big as you'll need to go for the most part. All right. So let's say we wanted uh, 2,000. Well, 2,000 then, we know that 10 bits is 1K. So 11 bits would be 2K. 12 bits would be 4K, 13 bits would be 8K, 14 bits would be 16K, 15 would be 32K, 16 would be 64K, 17, 17 would be 128K, 18 would be uh, 256K, and 19 would be 512K, and 20 would be 1 meg. So you can do this in your head because it's quite easy. Uh, all you have to remember is 2, 4, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 5, 12. And that's it. And you can calculate, you, you know the power of 2 for any power up to 60, I guess. Uh, anyway, so assuming I have PETA and, and EXA correct. And just for sake of argument, let me just go ahead and check that because I just don't remember uh, definition of petabyte 
it's so it's a thousand terabytes so it does come so it's petabyte and then exabyte and then let's change this okay we'll say that so yes one exabyte is a thousand uh, 10 to the 18th bytes, I guess. Petabytes e equal 1 million terabytes. Yeah, petabytes are 1 million terabytes. Oh, sorry, exabytes. Damn. Okay. 10 to the 18th. 2 to the 60th, 2 to the 60th bytes. 2 to the 60th. And it current and the internet currently handles 1 exabyte of data every hour. That's amazing. So, 2 to the si 2 to the 60th. Right. Okay. So, now we know. Okay, so 2 to the 60th. So, it is in fact uh, is in fact 50 is peta and 60 is exa. All right, just think PE. So now you can go all the way up to 2 to the 2 to the uh, 2 to the 69th, basically. Yeah. All right. So that should help you. So so in this case, we knew we needed at least 2,000. So that's 2K. So that's 2048. It's a little more than 2,000. That's 11 bytes, okay? I mean 11 bits, 11 bits. All right, all right, so if you expected the hospital would grow to double the number of employees, how many bits would be needed? Okay, so if you're gonna double the employees, how many more bits? How many bits more would be needed? Whenever you double a binary number, you add, you add one additional place or one bit. So you'd have to add one bit. After scanning, uh, yeah. After scanning, does the RFID reader send an analog or a digital signal to the system? Well, it sends it. It sends the actual employee number, which is a binary number, so it's clearly digital. The scan has lots of analog activity going on in it, but it results in a digital signal immediately. To reduce misreads from the scanner, what kind of code could you use? You could use a parity code. A scanner gives bad readings on a specific card. A spanner giving bad readings on a specific card would affect precision or accuracy or both. And this one is pretty much both. Obviously, uh, the more cards that don't read correctly, the lower the precision of the system. And also, it's going to lower the accuracy if it's a bad reading. Um, okay, do the math. So this is pretty simple, uh, but let's go through these. And, and sorry. Now, I I don't know how much of these I'm going to actually give you, but probably a few. All right. Okay. So. So, we we want to do decimal twenty-seven. Okay. So, that's pretty easy. We take twenty-seven, we divide by two, and we get thirteen would be twenty-six remainder 1. And then we divide 13 by 2 and we get 6, remainder 1. And then 6 divided by 2 we get 3, remainder 0. 2 into 3 we get 1, remainder 1. 2 into 1 we get 0, remainder 1. So our correct number is 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. We start, that's low order, next, 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 high order. It's symmetric, so you could put it backwards, it'd still be the same, but don't put it backwards. So this is 27. Now let's check it. That's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So 8 plus 2 is 10. 16 plus 10 is 26. 1 is 27. So that does check. All right, so 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, there's the, there would be the point 
we divide it 1, 2, 3, 4, and then pad up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be 1, and this is B. So the hex value is 0x1b. You don't have to put the 0x in here, but it, that would be preferable. Okay, 2c.4. So, um, so 2c would be 1, so it would be 0, 0, 1, 0. That's 2. C is 1, 1, 0, 0. And 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. That's 2c.4. And then uh, it's pretty easy. So the point 0.4... That's 4 sixteenths, okay, because it's 4 times 16 to the minus 1. So it's 2 times 16, or 32, plus uh, 12. So 32 plus 12, so that's uh, 12, so that's 44. 44 .4 sixteenths are 1 uh, fourth. Or 0.25. Okay, now let's do this subtraction. Okay, so 0 from 1 is 1. 1 from 0 can't do it, so you cross this off. You got a 0 there now, and you have a 2 there. 1 from 2 is 1. 1 from 0, you can't do that, so you cross that off. You got a 0 there and a 2 here. 1 from 2 is 1. Can't do this, so now we have to borrow this 1. That puts a 0 there. Now, we would put a 2 here, but we're going to borrow one from it. So I'll put a 1 here, and we'll borrow from this one a 1 there, and we'll borrow from this one a 1 there, and that'll put a 2 here. 1 from 2 is 1. 1 from 1 is 0. 0 from 1 is 1, and 1 from 1 is 0. And that's already 0, so that's our answer. 101.0. Uh, All right. Here we have our multiplication. Remember, our multiplier, if it's a 1, you copy the multiplicand. If it's a 0, you copy zeros. Those are the only two options. You don't even have to really do any multiplying. You just have to add up the partial products. So the first one is a 1, so we're going to put 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, I'm not going to put the leading 0 because you don't need it. And then we have zeros, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we'll do another set of zero, 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 zero. And finally, we're going to do one, one, zero, one, one. Add up the partial products, and you and you get one, one, zero, zero carrier one, one carrier one, 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 one. Okay, well, I may have made a mistake. Let me just, let's just double check this. Because now I'm, let's just double check it. I should have written the numbers bigger. So the first thing we'll do is we'll, do, we'll put this down. One, one, zero, one, one. Okay, then the next one, and we're not going to do the leading zero. Now we have four, now we have one, two, three, four, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five zeros. And then we'll have another one, two, three, four, five zeros. And then we'll have the same thing again. One, one, zero, one, one. Now I'll add this up. One, one, zero, zero carrier one, one carrier one, 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 one. So it's one, 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 zero, zero, one, one. One, 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 zero, zero. Okay, I did it right. My, the, uh, the answer that's on the web is wrong. So that's unfortunate. But anyway, um, so it is. Okay, and then uh, convert 56 to an 8-bit 2's complement. All right, so again, we'll do this one. Um, so 56 divided by 2. So that's, so 50 is 25. Uh, 26 would be 52. 22 would be 54, 23 would be 56, so that's, I'm sorry, 28, 28, 28, remainder 0, 2 into 28 is 14, remainder 0, 2 into 14 is 7, remainder 0, 2 into 7 is 3, remainder 1, 2 into 3 is 1, remainder 1, and 2 into 1 is 0, remainder 1. 
so zero zero so it now remember this is low order so zero 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 one 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 okay one one two four eight sixteen thirty two eight and thirty two are forty plus sixteen is fifty six so that checks now we pad it out to eight bits that's the next step we have one two three four five six seven eight so our so our so 56 56 base 10 equals uh, 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 0 base 2 now you get to, now if you want minus 56 base 10 you in binary in two's complement you have to copy bits to get to the first one copy that invert every other bit so 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 that is minus 56 you can also invert every bit and add 1 I'm not going to do that so our final answer then is 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 okay now um, prove this theorem okay and um, so let's look at this theorem all right so uh, make sure we get all the so we're gonna the left side is x plus y z prime so we'll have a column for x and we'll have a column for y z prime the right side is x or y here x or y anded with x plus z prime x plus z prime I already did these for you so now you just have to do this column so and then we have these two columns and it together and these two columns or together and they should be equal if the expression is correct now we happen to know x plus y z prime this really represents the second distributive law so we know it it has to be correct so it better come out correct or we got a problem now y z so first off wherever y is zero this is going to be zero wherever z is one this is going to be zero so, so we know the first two, y is 0, so it's got to be 0. Now here y is 1, but here z is 1, so we know it's got to be 1 there and 0 there. Now here y is 0 again, and then the same thing. So uh, 1, 0. Okay, so that's that. Now, um, if we or these two columns together, then we know that uh, x or this or this still zero this or this still zero that's a one still zero and then all these are ones one 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 okay now here are these two anded one and zero anded is zero zero and zero anded is zero one and one anded is one zero and one anded is zero one and one is one one and one is one one and one is one and one and one is one now we notice these two columns are exactly equal so what we say we say that for for all values of the variables the independent variables both sides are equal therefore the expression is true if it's true for all possible values of the expression then it has to be true and there it is all right now we do the next one uh, let's see oh it's up here all right so these are these are so the first one here is de morgan's law don't miss this uh, so de morgan's law uses x prime uh, x prime y prime quantity inverted so you invert the variables and invert the implied uh, and sign in between them so that's going to give us x plus y here we're going to invert x prime plus y prime x prime or with y prime so now you invert and that's just going to be x y and here we're going to do the whole quantity so we have w prime x plus y plus z prime so that's going to turn this and into a or and these two r's into ands 
but you have to put parentheses around this to make it work. So what you get is, and then invert the variable. So that's W plus X prime quantity times Y prime Z. Okay? Now, let's do this one. Multiply out to SOP and show the work. All right, so let's inspect it. We have A, B, C, D. A, B, D. Well, A, B, D is A, B, D. So this, this is, we can eliminate a term. Now we have A, B, D plus B, C, D prime. Um, so I don't really see, uh, I don't really see anything we can do here. We have a B in both expressions, and we have a D and a D prime. So we could do the multiplying and factoring here, or we could do the uh, 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 first distributive, the second distributive law. Let's do the second distributive law. So what we're going to do is we're going to let B be X, and we'll let C, D be Y, and A plus D be Z. All right, so, so that's going to be B plus A plus D, times uh, uh, C plus D prime. Now, for just this part, we can use multiplying and factoring. So that was the second distributive. Now we can use the multiplying and factoring with D, and we'll do D with the C and the D prime with the A. And so that's going to be B plus uh, a D prime plus C D. And now we're done. So now we're in, now we're in SOP form. All right, here we have, draw the logic diagram for the following. So this is really simple. We have an OR gate here. We have another OR gate here. And these two OR gates go into one AND gate. And F comes out of that. W, X, uh, Z, and X. W prime, Y prime, X. And then convert this one to POS form. All right. So we have, uh, so we have, uh, we have, a B, C here, we have a A, B prime C here, and an A prime B prime C there. So, uh, so first off, we can't eliminate a term, but we can combine these terms because we have an A, B prime C, and an A prime B prime C. So we, so we can combine these terms to B prime C using the... Uh, xy plus xy prime equals x. And we're going in this direction. All right, so bc, b prime c plus bc. And now we can use this again and combine these to c. So that's the answer. Now, consider, answer the following. A typical true type or Adobe font uh, for lowercase a takes one byte, true or false? No, it takes a bunch of bytes because it's it describes vectors uh, with magnitudes and angles because it's scalable. So yeah, way more than a byte, probably 15, 20, 30 bytes, who knows? You should use a gray code for a shaft encoder to reduce errors to plus or minus one bit. Yes, we talked about this extensively. Shaft encoders should always use gray codes. Okay, don't forget that. All right, ambiguities in system specifications for logic still work out to the same hardware. No, they don't. There's no ambiguities when you reduce your problem to a truth table. A truth table is like a steel trap. It is only, it represents one interpretation and only one. There is no wiggle room in a truth table. But when you write an English specification, sometimes there can be ambiguity in it, and that's what you need to eliminate when you talk to your customer. You as the engineer need to see where there might be confusion and you need to specifically ask questions to eliminate it. Because when you write your truth table, you have made decisions that 
uh, that decide any potential ambiguities in one particular way. It, it better be the right way that makes the customer happy. Ambiguities, so work out to the same hardware. False. A three in input, inclusive normal OR gate with inputs 0, 1, and 0 has what output? 0 or 1. Well, an OR gate, if any of the inputs are 1, a normal OR gate, if any of the inputs are 1, the output is 1. Write a Boolean, and if this were an exclusive OR gate, this would also be a 1, because only one input is a 1. Write a Boolean equation for this sentence. Use variables uh, A as a function of M, H, L, and C. Students will get a grade in logic design if they don't miss class and do all the homework or get very lucky on tests or cheat on tests. Okay, so 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 one so if we just write it out the way it's written, uh, the way it's said here, well it's written, you'll get you'll get a good grade if they don't miss class N do all the homework. So that's M H. And uh, you might even say M prime, since M equals one might be should mean miss class, so don't miss class would be M prime. I, but anyway, this is th these are going to be graded very loosely, so don't worry about them. Um, I just want you to get the idea here. So or, so this is an and, but that's an or. Get very lucky on tests, or cheat on tests. So, so they either do the work, get lucky, or cheat. It's really what it comes down to. And that actually makes sense. But could you look at it any other way? That's probably the best way. But you can always put parentheses, and you could do something like, uh, like, uh, like do all the homework, and then uh, M prime plus L plus C or something. I don't know. Anyway. But you can rearrange it with parentheses to make it slightly different. I don't think this is a, this is I don't think this is a good good way to do it. This would be the one to do it. Okay. All right. Now. Uh, all right. Moving on. Use. Uh, special the special logic design gate here, the LD gate, which outputs a one for all inputs where a prime equals zero, and either B or C equal one. All right, so so what we're requiring is a prime equals zero, and then B or C equals one. So if a prime equals zero, then a must equal 1. So we'll say, we'll change this and we'll say A equals 1. And so, and then either B or C, or of course both of them, would also have to be 1. So the first thing is, so since both of these are required, anywhere A equals 0, then A prime will equal 1, so this isn't going to work. So obviously these rows, these rows uh, F has to be zero, and I gave you the first two. Now, uh, these rows, A does equal one, so these are potentially, and we just have to have a one for B or C. Well, here C is one, there's B is one, they're both one, so these are all good, but here, neither B or C are one, so that still is a zero. So that's, that's how that works out. And how would you write this with the min terms? You need the you need the min terms from each row where the row where the min term is a one. Now remember the number of the rows, and we should always start with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is clearly going to be five comma six comma seven. Okay, all right. If POS switched SOP and vice versa, all right. So let's look at the first one. We have an A here. We have an A plus C, an A plus D. So these terms can be eliminated by the X plus X times uh, X times X plus Y equals X. This term goes away. 
All right, now we're just left with B plus C and with A. We use the first distributive law and distribute the A in, and we simply get AB plus AC, and now we're in SOP form. Here we have uh, W prime, Y, Z prime. Remember we had the function, uh, the second distributive law, X plus Y, Z equals X plus Y quantity times X plus Z. But we also had the corollary where it was X plus W, Y, Z, and that was just X plus W times X plus Y times X plus Z. Well, this exactly fits that. So now we just have to do uh, W plus X prime times W plus Y times W plus Z prime. And we're done. And here we have A prime B plus AC. So uh, several options here. But, well, the simplest option, uh, the simplest option is used M and F. And we just do A prime with C and A with B, and that's going to be A prime plus C quantity times A plus B. And now it's in POS form. Okay. And let's do the final one here. Final page. There are just 10 problems, but I spaced them out on this one, so it's four pages. Okay, use the truth table and write the minimum expression, then consider the don't cares and get the simplest solution. All right, so this one, this one you have to take a little, you have to think about it a little bit. So don't just race into it. I'm gonna give you a problem very similar to this, I promise. Okay, so what should you do? Well, so first off, notice this truth table has a don't care, which means you can choose the don't care to be a one or a zero. What you're interested in is which choice gives you the best solution, the simplest solution. Well, the only way to figure that out is to solve it two different ways. One, where you select the don't care to be a zero, which means you don't include that min term. And then the other one is where you do select it to be a one and you do include the min term. So here it's selected to be a zero, so you don't include this min term one. You just include min term zero, six, and seven, which would be then, uh, when we write the expression, we don't use the shorthand notation, we write it all out. So the expression here would be a prime, b prime, c prime, plus six, a, b, c prime, plus a, b, c. Now clearly we can combine these two and get AB. Can't do anything with this one. So the final solution is going to be A prime, B prime, C prime, plus AB. Okay? So that's where if we take it as a zero. Here we're going to take it as a one. So now we're going to do all these terms plus A prime, B prime, C. And we're going to say X equals one because we're going to use midterm one. So we have A prime, B prime, C prime, plus a prime, B prime, C plus, and we already know this is going to result in AB, so I'm just going to write it, AB. We'll combine these, and now we're going to get A prime, B prime plus AB. And that then is, um, can't really, uh, can't, can't reduce this anymore. Uh, so that's what happens when you take it as a one. Now, which one of these two expressions which, which is smaller? Well, this one has one less input on the first AND gate, so it is slightly better. And uh, so that means we should take X to be a one to get the, be to get the minimum solution. Okay, now this final problem is back to our four bit adder. And the way this works, we we have um, so we have four bits of B, four bits of A, B three, B two, B one, B zero, A three, A two, A one, A zero. We have four bits of sum S three two one zero and a carry out. We have also a carry in. So 
again, this is nine, the nine variables. This is the truth table with 512 rows. I've just given you two rows. They're just kind of arbitrarily chosen here. And I want you to fill out what the proper desire, the needed outputs for C out and S321 and zero would be. So the simple way to do this is just to, uh, is just to add these things up. Normally what I do is I, I just copy, I copy the A's. 1, 0, 1, 0. Move it over here to the B's. And then put in the C, carry in and then sum these up. So that would be 0, 0, 1. So that's a 1. 1 plus 1 is 0 carrier 1. 1 plus 1 is 0 carrier 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1 carrier 1. So that's 1 for the carry out. 1, 0, 0, 1. And then we'll do the same thing here. 1, 1, 0, 1. Move it over here. The carry out is 0, so we don't have to even write it. Well, you can if you want. 1 plus 1 is 1 carrier 1. Oh, sorry, sorry. 1 plus 1 is 0 carrier 1. So that's a 1. 1 plus 1 is 0 carrier 1. 1 plus 1 is 0 carrier 1. And we have a carry out. So 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so that fills in that. Now what about the questions down here? All right, so... How many rows would the entire truth table have? Well, we already know they're 9, so it's 2 to the 9th, or 5, 12. How many input variables are there in this problem? There are 9. How many output functions are in the problem? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 4 bits of sum and a single bit of carry out. All right. So that's working through the whole test. Um, and... Uh, so yeah, so that's it. And so uh, this should, if you can do this test and you can understand what we just did, you're you're in pretty good shape. And if you can't, you're in trouble. <laughs> so if you're in trouble, you need to buckle down and do some work. I will do a help session. Um, let's see, when would be a good time? Maybe I'll do a help session. Um, Maybe I'll do a help session. I usually don't do anything on Thursday, but maybe I'll do one tomorrow, uh, a Thursday at noon, okay? I'll do one Thursday at noon, tomorrow at noon. So, um, so if you're struggling, come tomorrow at noon, and I will, I will uh, help you. And I will send out the link by email uh, so that you have that link. So make sure you show up and get the help you need. Okay. And I was going to fix this. Oops. Okay. All right. So, so hopefully you see there um, what it takes. That's if you can work that test, you're in great shape. If you can't, then you need to you need to do a little work. Okay. Uh, but do come to the help session tomorrow at noon, and I will help you. I will help you. Okay. Um, make sure you're going to the uh, recitation sections and asking questions there. Exactly how the test will be, I'm not sure. But probably what I'll do is I'll give you a Word uh, document. I'll, I'll post it in Word and in PDF, PDF format. And you can download that. And that's going to have some figures on it. The online test will refer to those figures. And uh, you may have to solve some problems with those figures. You may have to work with the figures a little bit. And then you can answer the questions uh, online. Uh, so that's, that's, what I'll that's what I'm thinking about doing. So hopefully that'll, that'll work out. Um, and but all the questions will be on the test. I, I will probably have about uh, about uh, I'll probably have about 30, 30 questions, maybe 33, something like that. Um, and there, there may be like uh, maybe three questions, I don't know, three questions for each problem. There'll be, you know, uh, anyway, well, there'll be 100 points. 
So I'll try and make it work out. Um, if there are 33 questions, then each question should count uh, 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 three, three points, uh, three, three point, three, three, three points. And, but I'll probably make some questions four points and some questions three points, so it'll all work out evenly. Um, but I, probably each problem will have two questions worth three points and one question worth uh, four points, something like that. Uh, that's my that's that's how I'm thinking about it now. We'll see. Uh, I'll probably um, the your POS to SOP type problems will probably be as easy as the ones you just saw on this test. Uh, but nothing should be super hard. Uh, but if you aren't familiar with how to work these problems, you will flounder. And you won't be familiar if you haven't done all the homework, haven't gone to recitation, haven't gotten help to get your confusion eliminated. So remember, you must, you got to work on that confusion so you're not confused. And if you're not confused, then you're going to be able to solve this test pretty easily and get a good grade. Um, all right, so work the practice test uh, and then hopefully look at this video after you've done the practice test and see, see what you should have worked out. And then you'll know where you have little issues and you need to work on things. And then write some questions out come to the zoom help session tomorrow at noon with your questions and that that will make the help session go uh, be a lot more e efficient and powerful and if you don't have questions uh, it you get less out of the help session so try and do the work and have some issues and questions that pop up and so think to yourself what what didn't i understand uh, you know what where am i confused so then try and ask okay i'm confused about this and that makes it really helpful for me to know, okay, I, now I know where you're, what you're struggling with, and I can address that, hopefully. All right, uh, I think that's all I have, and we will, um, so we will see you uh, in, the help, in the Zoom help session tomorrow at noon, and I will send out the link. All right.